act three of if i had a father by george macdonald this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org act three scene a garret room Matey susan at the worst we've got to die some day sue and i don't know but hunger may be as easy a way as another i'd rather have a choice though and it's not hunger i would choose there are worse ways never mind we don't seem likely to be bothered with choosing <sighs> there's that buttonhole done lays down her work with a sigh and leans back in her chair i'll take it to old nathan it'll be a chop apiece it's wonderful what a chop can do to harden you up i don't think we ought to buy chops dear we must be content with bread, I think. <laughs> bread, indeed. Well, it's something to eat. Do you call it eaten when you see a dog polishing a bone? Bread's very good with a cup of tea. Tea, indeed. Fawn color, trimmed with sky blue. If you'd mentioned lobster salad and sherry now. I never tasted lobster salad. I have, though, and I do call lobster salad good you don't care about your whittles i do when i'm hungry i'm not at all comfortable poor dear sue there is a crust in the cupboard i can't eat crusts i want summat nice i ain't dying of hunger it's only i'm peckish very peckish though i could eat oh, let me see what i could eat i could eat a lobster salad and two dozen oysters and a lump of cake and the wing and the leg of a chicken mm. if it was a spring chicken with water creases round it and a bath bun and a sandwich and in fact i don't know what i couldn't eat except just that crust in the cupboard and i do believe i could drink a whole bottle of champagne i don't know what one of those things tastes like scarce one and i don't believe you do either don't i i never did taste champagne but i've seen them eaten lobster salad many a time girls not half so good looking as you or me maddie and fine gentlemen awaiting upon them oh dear i am so hungry think of having you supper with a real gentleman as talks to you as if you was fit to talk to not like them jew tailors as tosses your work about as if it dirtied their fingers and them none so clean for all their fine rings i saw nathan's joseph in a pastry cook's last saturday and a very pretty girl with him poor thing oh the hussy to let that beast pay for her i suppose she was hungry i'd die before i let a snob like that treat me no maddie i spoke of a real gentleman are you sure you wouldn't take nathan's joseph for a gentleman if he was civil to you thank you miss i know a sham from a real gentleman the moment i set eyes on him what do you mean by a real gentleman susan a gentleman as makes a lady of his girl but what sort of lady sue the poor girl may fancy herself a lady but only till she's left in the dirt that sort of gentleman makes fine speeches to your face and calls you horrid names behind your back sue dear don't have a word to say to one of them if he speaks ever so soft larks maddy they ain't all one sort you won't have more than one sort to choose from they may be rough or civil good-natured or bad but they're all the same in this that not one of them cares a pin more for you than if you was a horse no nor half a quarter so much don't for god's sake have a word to say to one of them if i die susan if you do matilda if you go and do that thing i'll take to gin that's what i'll do don't say i didn't act fair and tell you beforehand how can i help dying susan i say don't do it maddy we'll fall out if you do don't do it matilda La there's that lumpen bill again always a comin up the stair when you don't want him enter bill 
Well, Bill, how have you been getting on? Pretty tall, Matty. But I can't go on, so. Holds out his tool. It ain't respectable. What ain't respectable? Everything's respectable that's honest. Why, we ever saw a respectable shiner going there but with a three-legged stew for a black and box? It ain't the thing. The regulars chaps me fit to throw it at their heads, they does. Only there's too many on em, and I've got to draw it mild. A box I must have, or a fellow's occupation's gone. Look here, here. One Bob, one Tanner, and a Jay. There. That's what comes of never condescending to a halfpenny. Bless us. What mighty fine words we've got a waitin' on us. If I have a weakness, Miss Susan, it's for the right word in the right place. As the Costa said to the devil, old Jazz, burning him up for profane swearing. When a gentleman offers me a half penny, I access him in the politest manner I can assume to oblige me by giving of it to the first beggar he may have the good fortune to meet. Some of them throws down the half penny, the other one makes it a penny. But I say, May, you don't want nobody out of you, do you now? I don't know what you mean by that, Bill. You don't want a father, do you now? Do she, Susan? We want no father a Hector in here, Bill. You ain't seen one about, have you? I've seen a regular swell arter, Matty, anyhow. What do you mean, Bill? A regular swell. I repeat it. I asked not a young woman by the name of Matty. Susan pulling him aside. Hold your tongue, Bill. You'll kill her. You young viper. Hold your tongue or I'll twist your neck. Don't you see how white she is? What was he like? Do tell me, Bill. A long-legged wriggler swill, the gold chain, and a cane with a harvery handle. He's a bad man, Bill, and Matty can't abide him. If you tell him where she is, she'll never speak to you again. Oh, Susan, what shall I do? Don't bring him here, Bill. I shall have to run away again, and I can't, for we owe a week's rent. There. Bill. Don't you be afeard, Matty. He shan't touch you. Not the old one either. There wasn't an old man with him. Not an old man with a long stick? Not with him. Daddy was on his own hook. It must have been my father, Susan. Sinks back on her chair. Tain't the least likely. There, Bill. I always said you was no good. You've killed her. Matty. Matty. I didn't tell him where you was. Matty reviving. Run and fetch him, Bill. There's a dear. Oh, how proud I've been. If Mother did say a hard word, she didn't mean it. Not for long. Run, Bill. Run and fetch him. Matty, I was a fetching of him, but he wouldn't trust me. And didn't he cut up crusty and call me tight? He's a game old cock, he is, Matty. Matty getting up and pacing about the room. Oh, Susan... My heart'll break. To think he's somewhere near and I can't get to him. Oh, my side. Don't you know where he is, Bill? He's somewhere about. And blow me if I don't find him. A respectable old potty in a white pinny. And appeared if he'd go on a walk until he walked himself up starting. A scrumptious old potty. Had he a stick, Bill? Yes, a knobby stick. Leastways, a stick with knobs all over it. That's him, Susan. I could swear to the stick. I was too near getting at the taste on it not to know it again. When was it you saw him, Bill? Yesterday, Matty. Just after he gave me the tart. I saw him again this morning, but he won't place no confidence in me. Oh, dear. Why didn't you come straight to me, Bill? If I only had known as you wanted him. But, but that was such an unlikely thing. It's very provoking. I use my judgment. And puts my hoof in it. I'm sorry, Matty, but I didn't know no better. Crying. Don't cry, Bill. You'll find him for me yet, won't you? I'm off this identical minute. But you see. There, there. Now you mizzle. I don't want no fathers here, goodness knows. But the poor girl's took a fancy to hers, and she'll die if she don't get him. Run now, there's a good boy. Exit Bill. You ain't forgotten who's a common, Matty. No, indeed. Well, I hope she'll be civil, or I'll just give her a bit of my mind. 
Not enough to change hers, I'm afraid. That sort of thing never does any good. And am I to go a twiddling of my thumbs and saying, Yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am? Not if I knows it, Matilda. You will only make her the more positive in her ill opinion of us. <laughs> and what's that to me? Well, I don't like to be thought a thief. Besides, Mrs. Clifford has been kind to us. She's paid us for work done. So has old Nathan. Did old Nathan ever give you a glass of wine when you took home his slops? Oh, that don't cost much. And besides, she takes it out in kingdom come. You're unfair, Susan. Well, it's little fairness I get. And to set that right, you're unfair yourself. What you call speaking your mind is as cheap and as nasty as the worst shoddy old Nathan ever got gobble-stitched into coats and trousers. Very well, Miss Matilda. Rising and snatching her bonnet. The sooner we part, the better. You stick by your fine friends. I don't care that for them. Snapping her fingers. And you may tell em so. I can make a livin' without them or you either. Goodness gracious knows it ain't much of a livin' I've made sin I come across you, miss. Exit. Mattie trying to rise. Susan! Susan! Ugh! Lays her head on the table. A tap at the door and enter Mrs. Clifford with James behind. Mattie rises. Wait on the landing, James. Yes, ma'am. Exit James, leaving the door a little ajar. Well, Miss Pearson. Mattie offers a chair. No, thank you. That person is still with you, I see. Indeed, ma'am. She's an honest girl. She is a low creature and capable of anything. I advise you to get rid of her. Was she rude on the stair, ma'am? Rude? Vulgar. Quite vulgar. Insulting. I am very sorry. But believe me, ma'am, she is an honest girl and never pawned that work. It was done, every stitch of it. And the loss of the money is hard upon us, too. Indeed, ma'am, she did lose the parcel. You have only her word for it. If you don't give her up, I give you up. I can't, ma'am. She might go into bad ways if I did. She can't well get into worse. Her language, you would do ever so much better without her. I daren't, ma'am. I should never get it off my conscience. Your conscience, indeed. Rising. I wish you a good morning, Miss Pearson. Sound of a blow followed by scuffling. What is that? I fear I have got into an improper place. Susan bursts in. Yes, ma'am, and that you have. It's a very improper place for the likes of you, ma'am, as believes all sorts of wicked things of people as is poor. Who are you to bring your low flunkies a listening at honest girls' doors? Turning to James in the doorway. Get out, will you? Let me catch you here again, and I'll mark you that the devil wouldn't know his own. You dirty Paul Pry, you. Falls on her knees to Mattie. Mattie, you angel. Mattie trying to make her get up. Never mind, it's all right between you and me, Susan. I see, I thought as much. Susan starting up. As much as what then, my lady? Oh, I know you and your sort well enough. We're the dirt under your feet. Lucky if we stick to your shoes. But this room's mine. That linen was mine, young woman, I believe. And it's for that miserable parcel you come a-talking and abusing as no lady ought to? How dare you look that angel in the face there and say she stole it, which you're not fit to lace her boots for her? There. Susan, Susan, do be quiet. It's all very well for the likes of me. Courtesying spitefully. Which I'm no better than I should be, and a great deal worse if I'm on my oath to your ladyship. That's neither here nor there. But she's better than a van load of sitch ladies as you, prying into other people's houses with your Bibles and your religion and your flunkies. I know ye. I do. Don't, Susan. Why don't you go and pay tuppence a week to somebody to learn your good manners? I've been better brought up myself. 
I see I was wrong. I ought at once to have handed the matter over to the police. <laughs> the police, indeed. You get out of this, ma'am, or I'll make you. You and your cowardly men pop there, as is afraid to look me in the face through the crack of the door. Get out, I say, with your insolence. That's your word. Exit Mrs. Clifford. Susan, Susan, what is to become of us? <laughs> she daren't do it, the old Scrooge. But just let her try it on. See if I don't show her up before the magistrate. Maddie, I'll work my fingers to the bone for you. I would do worse, only you won't let me. I'll go to the court and tell the magistrate you're a dying of hunger, which it's as true as gospel. They'd send me to the workhouse, Suki. There must be some good people somewhere, Smatty. Yes, if we could get at them. But we can live till we die, Suki. I'll go and list for a soldier. I will. Women had done it afore. It's quite respectable, so long as they don't find you out. And they shouldn't me. There's never one of the redcoats will cut up rougher than I shall, barn the beard. And that don't go for much nowadays. And what should I do without you, Susan? Do you care to have me, then? That I do, indeed. But you shouldn't have talked like that to Mrs. Clifford. Ladies ain't used to such words. They sound worse than they are. Quite dreadful to them. She don't know your kind heart as I do. Besides, the look of things is against us, ain't it now? Say yourself. Susan starting up. I'll go and beg her pardon. I'll go directly. I will. I swear I will. I can't bear her, but I'll do it. I believe hunger is nigh draw me mad. It takes all the madness out of me. No, Susan. We must bear it now. Come along. We can be miserable just as well working. There's your sleeve. I'll thread your needle for you. Don't cry, there's a dear. I will cry. It's all I ever could do to my own mind. And it's all as is left me. But if I could get my claws on that lovier of yours, I wouldn't cry then. He's at the bottom of it. I don't see myself what's the use of fall in love. One man's as much of a fool as another to me. But you must go to bed. You ain't fit. You'll be easier when you've got your frock off. There. Why, child, you're all of a tremble. And no wonder with nothing on her blessed body but her frock and her shimmy. Don't take off my frock, Sue. I must get on with my work. Lie down a bit, anyhow. I'll lie at your back, and you'll soon be as warm as a toast. Matty lays down. Oh, Lord, she's dead. Her heart stopped beating. Runs out of the room. A moment of silence. A tap at the door. Constance peeps in, then he enters with a basket. Miss Pearson, she's asleep. Goes near. Good heavens! Lays her hand on her. No. Takes a bottle from her basket, finds a cup, and pours into it. Take this, Miss Pearson. It will do you good. There now. You'll find something else in the basket. I don't want anything. I had so nearly got away. Why did you bring me back? Life is good. It is not good. How dare you do it? Why keep a miserable creature alive? Life ain't to us what it is to you. The grave is the only place we have any right to. If I could make your life worth something to you. You make my life worth to me. You don't know what you're saying, miss. Sitting up. I think I do. I will not owe my life to you. I could love you, though. Your hands are so white and you look so brave. That's what comes of being born a lady. We never have a chance. Miss Pearson, Maddie, I would call you if you wouldn't be offended. Me offended, miss? I've not got life enough for it. I only want my father and my mother, and a long sleep. If I had been born rich... You might have been miserable all the same. Listen, Maddie, I will tell you my story. I was once as badly off as you. Worse in some ways. Ran about the streets without shoes to my feet, and hardly a frock to cover me. 
La, miss, you don't say so. It's not possible. Look at you. Indeed, I tell you the truth. I know what hunger is, too, well enough. My father was a silk weaver in Spitalfields. When he died, I didn't know where to go, but a gentleman— Oh, a gentleman. Why couldn't you be content with one, then? I don't understand you. I dare say not. There, take your basket. I'll die afore a morsel passes my lips. There, go away, miss. Constance has said. Poor girl, she's delirious. I must ask William to fetch a doctor. Exit. I wish my hands were as white as hers. Enter Susan, followed by Colonel Gervais, Constance behind. Maddie, dear Maddie, this gentleman, don't be vexed. I couldn't help him being a gentleman. I was crying that bad, and I didn't see no one come up to me. And when he spoke to me, it made me jump, and I couldn't help answering of him. He spoke so civil and soft-like, and me nigh mad. I thought he was dead, Maddie. He says he'll see us right it, Maddie. I'll do what I can if you will tell me what's amiss. Oh, everything's amiss, everything. Who was that went out, Maddie, this minute as we come in? Miss Lacordaire. Her imperence. Well, I should die of shame if I was her. She's an angel, Susan. There's her basket. I told her to take it away, but she would leave it. Susan peeping into the basket. Oh, my! Ain't this nice? You must have a bit, Maddie. Not one mouthful. You wouldn't have me, Susan. I ain't so particular. Eating a great mouthful. You really must, Maddie. Goes on eating. Don't tease her. We'll get something for her presently. And don't you eat too much all at once. I think she'd like a chop, sir. Oh, there's that boy Bill again. Always when he ain't wanted. Enter Bill. Bill has said to Susan. What's the row? What's the egg gent up to? Oh, I've been and had enough of gents. They're a bad lot. Oh, I've been too much for one on em, though. I have run him down. And Matty, I found the old gentleman. My father, Bill? That's it precisely. Right as a trivet he is. Susan, take hold of me. My heart's going again. Law, what's up with Matty? She do look dreadful. You been and upset her, you clumsy boy. Here, run and fetch a sausage or two, and a... No, no, that will never do. Them's for Bill and me, sir. I was a going on, sir. And Bill, a chop, a nice chop. But, Lord, how are we to cook it, with never a frying pan or a bit of fire to set it on? You'd never think of doing a chop for an invalid in the frying pan? Certainly not, sir. We ain't got one. Everything's up to spout and over the top. Run, Bill. A bit of cold chicken and two pints of bottle stout. There's the money the gentleman give me. Tain't no Miss Lecker dares, Maddie. Or oh, trouble no gentleman to provide for my family. Oblige all the same, sir. Matty never was a dub at dewiring, but I'll get her some at Taysom. I favour scrub myself. I'll go with you, Bill. I want to talk to you. Well, uh, I ain't no objection. Sir B. You wants to talk friendly, sir. Uh, good night. I'll come and see you tomorrow. God bless you, sir. You've saved both on our lives. I was a going to drown myself, Matty. I really was this time. Wasn't I, sir? Well, you look like it. That is all I can say. You shall do it next time, so far as I'm concerned. I won't never know more again, sir. Not if Mary don't drive me to it. Constance to Colonel Jervis. Come back for me in a little while. Yes, miss. Come, Bill. Exit. All right, sir. I'm a foreign, as the cat said to the pigeon. Exit. I'll just go and get you a cup of tea. Mrs. Jones' kettle's sure to be a bilin. That's what you would like. Exit. Constance steps aside, and Susan passes without seeing her. Oh, to be a baby again in my mother's arms. But it'll soon be over now. Constance comes forward. I hope you're a little better now. You're very kind, miss. And I beg your pardon for speaking to you as I did. Don't say a word about it. 
"'You didn't quite know what you were saying. "'I'm in trouble myself. "'I don't know how soon I may be worse off than you.' "'Why, miss, I thought you were going to be married.' "'No, I am not.' "'Why, miss, what's happened? "'He's never going to play you false, is he?' "'I don't mean ever to speak to him again.' "'What has he done to offend you, miss?' "'Nothing. "'Only I know now I don't like him. "'To tell you the truth, Maddie, he's not a gentleman.' "'Not a gentleman, miss. How dare you say so?' "'Do you know anything about him? Did you ever see him?' "'Yes.' "'Where?' Oh, "'Once at your house.' "'Oh, I remember. That time. I begin to... "'It couldn't be at the sight of him you fainted, Maddie. You knew him. Tell me. Tell me. Make me sure of it.' "'To give you your revenge? No. It's a mean spite to say he ain't a gentleman.' "'Perhaps you and I have different ideas of what goes to make a gentleman.' "'Very likely.' "'Oh, don't be vexed, Maddie. I didn't mean to hurt you.' "'Oh, I dare say.' "'If you talk to me like that, I must go.' "'I never asked you to come.' "'Well, I did want to be friendly with you. I wouldn't hurt you for the world.' Maddie bursting into tears. <laughs> "'I beg your pardon, miss. I'm behaving like a brute. But you must forgive me.' My heart is breaking. Poor dear. Kissing her. So is mine, almost. Let us be friends. Where's Susan gone? To fetch me a cup of tea. She'll be back directly. Don't let her say bad words. I can't bear them. I think it's because I was so used to them once. In the streets, I mean. Not at home. Never at home. She don't often miss. She's a good-hearted creature. It's only when hunger makes her cross. She don't like to be hungry. I should think not, poor girl. Don't mind what she says, please. If you say nothing, she'll come all right. When she's spoken her mind, she feels better. Here she comes. Re-enter Susan. It begins to grow dark. Well, and who have we got here? Miss Lacordaire, Suki. There's no lack a dare about her to come here. It's very kind of her to come, Susan. I tell you what, miss, that parcel was stole. It was stole, miss. Stole from me. And that angel there a dying in the street. I'm quite sure of it, Susan. I never thought anything else. Not but I allow it was a pity, miss. I'm very sorry. But bless you. Lighting a candle. With all your fine clothes. My, you look like a theatre queen. You do, miss. If you was to send them up the spout now, my, what a lot they'd let you have on that silk. The shawl is worth a good deal, I believe. It's an Indian one, all needlework. And the beautiful silk. Laws, miss, just shouldn't I like to wear a frock like that. I should be hard up before I pledged that. But the shawl, if I was you, miss, I would send most everything up before that. Things inside, you know, miss, where it don't matter so much. Constance laughing. <laughs> the shawl would be the first thing I should part with. I would rather be nice inside than out. Lark, miss, I shouldn't wonder if that was one of the differs now. Well, I never. It ain't seen. It must be one of the differs. What differs? I don't understand you. The differs between girls and ladies girls like me and real ladies like you oh i see but how dark it has got what can be keeping william i must go at once or what will my aunt say would you mind going with me a little bit susan i'll go with pleasure miss just a little way i mean till we get to the wide streets you couldn't lend me an old cloak could you i ain't got one stitch miss but what i stand up in Except it be a hot glove and half a pocket handkerchief. Nobody will know you. But I oughtn't to be out dressed like this. You've only got to turn up your skirt over your head, miss. Constance drawing up her skirt. I never thought of that. Well, I never. What's the matter? Only the whiteness of the lining has took my breath away, miss. It ain't no use turning of it up. You look like a lady, whatever you do to hide it. But never mind. 
that ain't no disgrace so long as you don't look down on the rest of us there miss there you are fit for play come along i'll take care of you logs i'm as good as a man i am good-bye then maddie good-bye miss god bless you exeunt end of act three act four of if i had a father by george macdonald this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org act four scene the studio enter colonel jervis walks about restless and eager thank heaven if bill has found mr war now exit enter warren what can the fellow be up to there's something odd about him something i don't like but it can't mean mischief when he sends for me where could gervaise have picked him up nobody here re-enter colonel gervais and hurries to him with outstretched hand my dear sir i am greatly obliged to you this is very kind warren stepping back excuse me i do not understand i beg your pardon i ought to have explained i believe something of the sort is necessary you are my master's friend i should be proud of the honour can i be of any service to him i believe i can trust you i will trust you i am his father whose father Belzebub's. arthur's your friend gervais's i am sir walter gervais you must help me to help him warren regards him for a moment sir walter i owe your son much you nothing yet i am his friend there is not a moment to lose listen an old man came about the place a few weeks ago looking for his daughter he has been got out of the way but i have learned where he is i want you to bring him in i would serve your son blindwald you must excuse me if i wish to understand first arthur is in trouble he has a secret god forgive me i i feared it was a bad one you don't know him as i do i know him now and can help him only i can't prove anything yet i must have the old man i found his daughter and suspect the villain if i can bring the three together all will come out sure enough the boy i sent for you will take you to the father he will trust you and come bell rings i must go to arthur now exit what a strange old fellow an officer and disguise himself enter bill here you are sir no vast amount of information in that statement my boy well sir here i are sir that is a trifle more to the point though scarcely requiring mention then here we are sir that will do if you know what comes next i do sir go on then here goes come along sir you have to take a bobby though we'll see about that you go on exeunt enter gervais followed by colonel gervais what a time you have been william i'm sorry sir did you want anything no but i don't like to be left you're the only friend i have thank you sir a man must do his duty but it's a comfort when his colonel takes notice of it is it all from duty william yet why should i look for more there was a little girl i tried to do my duty by once my head's rather queer still william is there anything to be done sir no it's here putting his hand to his head inside i meant about the little girl sir i can keep dark as well as another when there's anything on one man's mind sir good or bad it's a relief to mention it if you could trust me you pause men have trusted their servants and not repented it no doubt no doubt but there is no help for me you cannot be sure of that sir you would help me if you could i believe 
god knows i would sir to the last drop of my blood that's saying much william a son couldn't say more no nor a father either oh yes he could sir and mean it yes if i had a father william i would tell him all about it i was but two years old when he left me then you don't remember him sir i often dream about him and then i seem to remember him what is he like sir in your dreams i mean i never see him distinctly i try hard sometimes but it's no use if he would but come home i feel as if i could bear anything then but i'm talking like a girl where is your father sir in india a soldier sir yes colonel gervais you must have heard of him sir walter he is now i've heard of him sir away in the north parts he's been mostly yes how i wish he would come home i would do everything to please him i have it william i'll go to india i did think of going to garibaldi but i won't i'll go to india i must find my father will you go with me willingly sir is there any fighting there now not at present i believe that's a pity i would have listed in my father's regiment and then that is by the time he found me out he wouldn't be ashamed of me i've done nothing yet i'm nobody yet and what could he do with a son that was nobody a great man like him a fine son i should be a son ought to be worthy of his father don't you think so william that wouldn't be difficult sir i mean with most fathers ah but mine you know william are you good at the cut and thrust uh, pretty good sir i believe then we'll have a bout or two i've got rusty have i said anything odd or or i mean since i've been ill nothing you need mind sir i'm glad of that i feel as if putting his hand to his head william what could you do for a man if he was your friend no i mean if he was your enemy i daren't say sir is the sun shining yes sir it's a lovely day what a desert the sky is so dreary and wide and waste ah if i could but creep into a hole in a tree and feel it closing about me how comfortable those toads must feel colonel gervais aside he's getting light-headed again i must send for the doctor exit but the tree would rot and the walls grow thin and the light come through it is crumbling now and i shall have to meet her and then the wedding oh my god starts up and paces about the room it is the only way my pistols i think yes goes to a table finds his keys and unlocks a case there they are i may as well have a passport at hand loading one the delicate thunder tube turns it over lovingly solitude and silence one roar and then rest no no rest still the demon to fight but no eyes to meet and brave who is that in the street she is at the door with him enter colonel gervais and seizes his arm gervais with a cry you've killed my psyche goes to the clay and lifts the cloth there's the bullet hole through her heart it might have been worse sir worse i've killed her see where she flies she's gone she's gone bursts into tears colonel gervais leads him to the couch thank you william i couldn't help it that man was with her i meant it for myself who did you say was with her you mustn't heed what i say i am mad you knock he starts up don't let them in william i shall rave if you do colonel gervais catches up the pistols and exit hurriedly gervais throws himself on the couch re-enter colonel gervais he is in love with her everything proves it my boy my boy father father oh william i was dreaming and took you for my father 
i must die william somehow there must be some way out of this the doors can't all be locked there's generally a chance to be had sir there's always a right and a wrong fighting at out somewhere there's garibaldi in the field again die by the hand of an enemy if you will die sir jerry's smiling <laughs> that i couldn't william the man that killed me would be my best friend yes garibaldi i don't deserve it though he fights for his country i should fight but for death only a man doesn't stop when he dies does he william i trust not sir but he may hope to be quieter that is if he dies honestly it's grand for a soldier he sweeps on the roaring billows of war into soundless haven think of that sir why william how you talk yes it would be grand on the crest of the war cataract heading a cavalry charge to-morrow william i shall be getting stronger all the way we'll start to-morrow wherefore sir for italy for garibaldi you'll go with me to the death sir yes that's it that's where i'm going but not to-day look at my arm it wouldn't kill a rat you saved my life but i'm not grateful if i was dead i might be watching her out of the lovely silence my poor psyche she's none the worse sir the pistol didn't go off ah she ought to have fallen to pieces long ago you've been seeking to keep her shroud wet but it's no matter let her go earth to earth and dust to dust the law of nature and art too exit into the house colonel gervais following him i mustn't lose sight of him here he comes again thank god catches up a coat and begins brushing it re-enter gervais i don't like to see you doing that why shouldn't i serve my own superior sir anything's better than serving yourself and that's what every one does who won't serve other people you are right and it's so cheap and so nasty right again william right indeed you're a gentleman if there's anything i could help you in anything gone wrong any friends offended i'm not altogether without influence colonel gervais aside he will vanquish me with my own weapons but you will go to garibaldi with me i will sir and ride by my side of course if you ride by me you will have to ride far i know sir but if you would be fit for fighting you must come and have something to eat and drink all right a soldier must obey i shall begin by obeying you only mind you keep up with me exit leaning on colonel gervais enter thomas the tool i mun be here we are main trouble to get shut o they ravers i'm all as he trouble mine's a gradely head it be oi nobody here seems to me honest men can be scarce in lunnon i'm bound to believe nobody but my own ears and my own owd lass exit re-enter gervais followed by colonel gervais no william i won't lie down i feel much better let's have a bout with the foils very well sir aside a little of that will go far i know gets down the foils and william you must set a block up here i shall have a cut or two at it to-morrow there's a good cavalry weapon up there next that cast of davis's arm suppose your father were to arrive just after you had started i shouldn't mind i don't want to see him yet i'm such a poor creature the heart seems to have gone out of me you see william you enter mrs clifford ah how do you do aunt what's this nonsense about garibaldi arthur who told you you don't mean it's true quite true aunt really arthur you are more of a scatterbrain than i took you for don't say that aunt i only take after my father don't talk to me of your father i have no patience with him a careless hard-hearted fellow not worthy the name of a father she glares at sir walter you may go william colonel gervais retires slowly aunt you have been a mother to me but were you really my mother i must not listen to such words of my father he has good reasons for what he does 
though i admit there is something in it we don't understand if i could but understand how constance what do you say what was that about constance oh nothing aunt i was only thinking how difficult it is to understand people if you mean constance i agree with you she is a most provoking girl gervais smiling i'm sorry to hear that aunt i am very glad you were never so silly as to take a fancy to the girl she would have led you a pretty dance if you saw how she treats that unfortunate waterfield but what's bred in the bone won't out of the flesh there's nothing bred in her i would have out aunt perhaps she originated her vulgarity that is a shade worse vulgarity aunt i cannot remember the meaning of the word when i think of her if you choose to insult me arthur exit it is high time i were gone if i should be called in now to settle matters between william 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 enter colonel jervis tomorrow william not a word if you will go with me i shall be glad if you will not i shall go without you exit yes sir i wish warren were here with the old man i don't know what to do till he comes enter constance i thought my aunt was here william no miss she was here but she's gone again could i see mr gervais for a moment certainly miss i'll tell him is he still determined on going william yes miss uh, to-morrow he says to-morrow yes miss i think he means to start for dover in the morning what am i to do what's the matter miss what can i do i know he is angry with me i don't quite know why i wish i had never i can't help it now my heart will break don't let him go to dover to-morrow miss he would have listened to me once he won't now it's all so different everything has gone wrong somehow do try to keep him from going miss he would but think me forward i could bear anything better than have him think ill of me no fear of that miss the danger is all the other way what other way william he thinks you don't care a bit about him exit constance drops on the dais nearly under the veiled psyche enter gervais and stands a moment regarding her constance constance starting up and flying to him with her hands clasped arthur arthur don't go i can't bear you to go it's all my fault but do forgive me oh do do dear arthur don't go to-morrow i shall be miserable if you do but why my why constance i was your constance once but why should i not go nobody wants me here oh arthur how can you be so cruel can it be that do say something if you won't say anything how can i know what you are thinking what you wish perhaps you don't like i would i have i won't oh arthur do say something i have nothing to say constance then i have lost you altogether i dare say i deserve it i hardly know god help me what can i have done so very wicked oh why did you take me out of the streets i should have been used to them by this time they are terrible to me now no no arthur i thank you thank you with my very soul what might i not have been by this time but i used to lie in that corner and i daren't now enter colonel gervais behind it was a happy time for i had not offended you then good-bye won't you say one word to me you will never see me again she pauses a moment then exit weeping by the back door behind the psyche colonel gervais follows her how could she love that fellow looking up gone gone my constance my psyche i've driven her into the wild street oh my god william william constance which door i won't go constance i won't i will do anything you ask me what was that she said good-bye god in heaven william you idiot where are you william he rushes out by the front door re-enter colonel gervais by the back door 
it was lucky i met bill he's after her like the wind that message will bring her back i think i could trust that boy with anything but where is he enter thomas what friend here at last thank god just sit down a moment will you peeps into the room of the study he's not there i heard him calling this moment perhaps he's in the house did you leave the door open sir nay th door open or oh, say somebody run out as i come up my boy my boy it will kill him stop here till i come back rushes out oh connot stop oh, i'm tired enough god knows to stop anywheres my head goes round and round and i'd fain lie me down but i must be going nobody can tell what may be coming to my matty or mungo or luke ah they couldn't keep me owd man as i were but i wish i had a word with mon first enter warren this must be the old fellow himself here he is after all peeps into the room there be nobody there sir the maister's run out and th'mon after him run out oh never says what i done at main and i'm glad you are there sir for william he towed me to stay till he come back but i've not geet so much time to spare and so bees you're a friend of the maister's you'll maybe mind the shop a small bit o oh, mungo going i say old man your name's thomas pearson ain't it yai oh yeah but here comes to to know my name i know all about you everybody knows everybody here eh? oh, i connot stir a foot for folks as knows me and knows my name and knows what i'll be after london is a dreadful place o oh, mung geet my lass to warm you'll mind the shop until the maister comes back good night going Warren stopping him they want you here a bit you'd better stop the man will be back directly you're too suspicious nay nee, maister there it's wrong there oh i've trusted too much a thousand times too much you trusted the wrong people then it takes no mack o a warlock to tell me that maister it's small comfort norther well now you give me a turn and hear what i've got to say you're all tarred with same stick everybody makes gan of the poor owd mon let me go maister i want my chilt my matty you must wait till mr gervase's man comes back thomas despairingly oh lord the peck of some brunt lies they've been telling me sin o come ye children and o'er have patience man you won't repent it what mun be mon o connot ha patience but o can stop o rather go though i'm none sorry to rest neither sits down on the dais enter bill here boy don't let the old man go till someone comes exit all right sir hello daddy there you are thank god what fur boy will he give me my matty again dost to think that he will daddy you come along and you'll know an honest boy next time i can't till i see mr william though if that means the maister's mon ye he's run out and all connot's go with all i'm keepin th shop till he come back and all dunnot's mitch care to go with all all dunnot's mitch trust tho the lord have a care of me all dunnot know which to trust and which not to trust but all mun wait for maister william as you call him all right daddy don't you stir from here till i come back not for nobody no not for joseph i dunnot know no joseph i'll soon let you see i'm an honest boy as you can't go to matty i'll bring matty to you see if i don't and if she ain't the run i'll take her back and charge you nothing for carriage can't say fairer than that daddy bless the my boy does to me ain't it true yes and that you'll see afore you're half an hour old to daddy when mr williams comes you say to him bill's been all right oh don't like secrets lad what don't you mean everybody seems to mean something and nobody to say it never you mind daddy bill's been all right that's your ticket i'm off exit thomas gets up and walks about murmuring to himself a knock at the door somebody after me again or gate out of the way goes behind the psyche enter waterfield nobody here i am unlucky not at home said the rascal and grinned by jove 
i'll be at the bottom of this there's no harm in gervais he's a decent fellow knocks at the door of gervais's room i won't leave the place till i've set things right not if i've got to give him a post albert for five thousand i won't nobody there looks in no then i'll go in and wait exit thomas peeping from behind the psyche that's the villain lord a mercy that's the villain if o'er as strong as o'er owd o'd scrunch his yed o'er wood o'm sure it's the mon he kept out of my way but o'll say him once o oh lord keep my hands off of him o oh, met kill him o oh, am sartin sure of him when o see him o oh, not go nigh him till somebody comes set me runs away o oh, am no flayed of him but i met not be able to keep my owd of him o oh, more matty more matty to leave the owd feyther for such a mack of a mon as yon but here comes somebody more goes behind the psyche enter mrs clifford no one here she can never be in his room with him opens the door oh mr waterfield you're here are you waterfield coming to the door mrs clifford this is indeed an unexpected pleasure have you got constance with you there i've no such good fortune where is she then at home i presume indeed she is not i must speak to arthur he's not here where's my his man then taken himself off to the public house i suppose there's nobody about odd ain't it i'll go and see exit into the house what can be the row there is some row exit into the room enter gervais supported by colonel gervais thank god thank god but where is she i shall go mad if you've told me a lie i saw her and sent a message after her we shall have news of her presently do have a little patience sir how can i have patience i'm a brute a mean selfish devil if that fellow waterfield was to horsewhip me i should let him thomas coming forward they were that young chap here a while ago and he said over to say to maister william what were it o'er to say yeah it were bill's been or eight there sir i told you so do sit down i'll go after her i will i will only make haste stands staring at the psyche the boy said he'd be here directly you sit down i'll be with you presently thomas retiring behind the psyche who are not likely to go maister enter mrs clifford crosses to room door enter waterfield they talk william i don't want them retreats towards the psyche sit here one moment sir leads him to the dais advances to mrs clifford mrs clifford trying to pass him arthur what can colonel gervais intercepting her uh, let him rest a bit ma'am if you please he's been out for the first time at night and in a fog a pretty nurse you are poor boy mr waterfield sir would you mind stepping into the room again for a moment exit waterfield mrs clifford ma'am would you please get a glass of wine for master exit mrs clifford into the house william william yes sir send him away don't let him stop there i have nothing to say to him he shan't trouble you sir i'll take care of that goes behind the psyche to thomas but keeps watching the door of the room did you see the man that went in there just now thomas with anxiety he winna jump out of the window dost to think lad re-enter mrs clifford with wine gervais drinks why should he do that do you know anything about him i oh, do has he seen you here no or afeard he'd run away nor keep it snug i needn't ask who it is then you needn't lad enter waterfield my conscience he'll pike out afore i get out on him rushes out and seizes waterfield enter matty and bill that's a dumbed villain where's my matty waterfield knocks thomas down oh lord this wheel's murdered old daddy 
all but gervais rush together colonel gervais seizes waterfield methy throws herself on her knees beside thomas and lifts his head father father look at me it's mattie your own wicked mattie look at her once father dear lays down his head in despair and rises who struck the good old man he did the swell has given me the gold sov mr watkins i haven't the honour of the gentleman's acquaintance i'm not mr watkins am i now to colonel gervais ah oh, ha let go i say i'm not the man it's all a mistake you see in good time i might make a worse watkins mayn't be your name but watkins is your nature damn your insolence let me go i tell you struggles threatening gently gently young man if i gave your neckcloth a twist now yes there is a mistake and a sad one for me a wretch that would strike an old man indeed you are not what i took you for you hear the young woman she says it's all a mistake my good girl i'm sorry for the old gentleman but he oughtn't to behave like a ruffian really now you know a fellow can't stand that sort of thing a downright assault i'm sorry i struck him though devilish sorry i'll pay the damage with pleasure puts his hand in his pocket matty turning away and not a gentleman kneels by thomas and weeps thomas feebly done it great matty my chilt o oh, more right let the mon go what's he to thou me by for mass oh, i'm strong enough to lick him yet trying to rise but falling back eh eh my bones are dray the not it's no blame sure to an old man to fall tired of fating matty taking his head on her lap father father forgive me i'm all yours i'll go home with you and work for you till i drop oh father how could i leave you for him i don't care one bit for him now i don't indeed you'll forgive me won't you father oh wool oh do my matty come warm come warm will mother forgive me father the mother chilt who's forgiven thee longer for give us a longer go chilt the mother may talk loud but her heart is as soft as a parritch thou knows it matty all oh, this is very interesting only you see it's the wrong man and i can't say he enjoys it take your hand off my collar will you i'm not the man i tell you all i says is it's the same swell who's given me the skit to find her i'll kiss the book on that jerry's coming forward mr waterfield on your honour do you know this girl come you ain't going to put me to my catechism you must allow appearances are against you damn your appearances what do i care if you will not answer my question i must beg you to leave the place my own desire will you oblige me by ordering this bull-dog of yours to take his paws off me what the devil is he keeping me here for i've a great mind to give you in charge the old codger assaulted me first true but the whole affair would come to light that's what i would have miss pearson what am i to do with this man enter susan at the back door behind her constance peeps in let him go father father kisses him that can never be matty's gentleman surely hm i don't think much of him i knew he had ugly eyes i told you so matty i wouldn't break my heart for him no nor for twenty of him i wouldn't he looks like a drowned cat what the devil have you got to do with it nothing you shut up well i'm damned if i know whether i'm on my head or my heels <laughs> tain't no count which bill aside to colonel gervais she's at the back door mr william who is bill miss lacordere right you air 
colonel gervais hastens to the door constance peeps in and draws back colonel gervais follows her waterfield approaches mattie miss pearson if that's i don't know you don't even know your name waterfield looking round you hear her say it she don't know me could you try and rise father i want to get out of this there's a lady here says i'm a thief there that she cannot say matty that comes of honest folk or get up directly attempts to rise eh eh o connaught o connaught if i have been unjust to you miss pearson i shall not fail to make amends it's time you did then ma'am you've murdered her and all but murdered me that's how your little bill stands leave the place mr waterfield you shall answer for this gervais leave the study at once tut tut i'll make it up to them a banknote's a good plaster please sir shall i run and fetch a bobby i like to see a swell wanted you hold your tongue retires to the dais and sits down mrs clifford follows him waterfield taking out his pocket-book and approaching matty i didn't think you'd have served me so matty indeed i didn't it's not kind after what's been between you and me matty rises and stands staring at him you've ruined my prospects you have but i don't want to bear malice take that old times you know take it you're welcome forces the note on her she steps back it drops this is a humiliation will nobody take him away susan rushing at him you be off and them goggle eyes of yours or i'll goggle em i can't bear the sight on them i should never have taken you for a gentleman you don't look it you slope i say hustles him waterfield picks up the note and exit matty bursting into tears <laughs> father father don't hate me don't despise me thomas tries to get up but falls back don't be in no hurry daddy there's no more friends here now except the old lady she do look glum i'll soon settle her hash susie susie don't there's a dear what business has she here then she's not a doing of nothing don't you see she's looking after the poor gentleman there william william gone again what a fellow he is the best servant in the world but always vanishing call your james will you aunt we must have the old man put to bed but the poor girl looks the worse of the two she can have the spare room and william can sleep on the sofa in mine i'll see to it exit gervais goes towards thomas come warm come warm matty the mother who's crying her ears out to warm i'll run for a doctor first father no no chilt we're only a bit stunned like or be all right in a small bit or done it want no doctor or we're coming round neither of you shall stir to-night your rooms will be ready in a few minutes thank you sir i don't know what i should have done with him susan you won't mind going home without me you know miss luck or dare miss luck or dare what do you know of her oh dear oh dear i oughtn't to have mentioned her but my poor head what of miss luck or dare for god's sake tell me enter mrs clifford with james oh nothing sir nothing at all only miss luck or dare has been good to us which it's more than can be said for everybody scowls at mrs clifford james proceeds to lift thomas she flies at him put the old gentleman down you sneaking reptile how many doors have you been a harkening at since morning a eh, putty lump you touch the old man again and i'll mark you here bill i'll take his head you take his feet we'll carry him between us like a feather oh susan do hold your tongue it's my only weapon my dear if i was a man <laughs> see if i talk then it's a providence you ain't a man young woman <laughs> right you are them's my wary motives 
i ain't a makin of no complaint on that score young plush i wouldn't be a man for <laughs> no not for not even for sich a pair o calves as yourn susan and bill carry thomas out matty follows gervais is going after them don't you go arthur they can manage quite well i will go if you like they know something about constance pray give yourself no anxiety about her what do you mean aunt i will be responsible for her where is she then exit mrs clifford william if he doesn't come in one minute more i'll go after her myself those girls know where she is i am as strong as a giant oh god all but married to that infamous fellow that he should ever have touched the tip of one of her fingers what a sunrise of hope psyche may yet fold her wings to my prayer william william where can the fellow be enter colonel gervais in uniform and star leading constance gervais hurrying to meet them constance constance forgive me oh my god you will when you know all she knows enough for that already my boy or she wouldn't be here take her and me for her sake what who constance what does it all mean it must be can it be my father william it is william william my father oh father father throwing his arms about him it was you all the time then my boy my boy there take constance and let me go i did want to do something for you but there i'm too much ashamed to look at you in my own person gervais kneeling father father don't talk like that oh father my father colonel gervais raising him my boy my boy i wanted to do something for you tried hard and was foiled i doubly deserved it i doubted as well as neglected you but god is good he has shamed me and saved you by your hand father no by his own it would all have come out right without me i was unworthy of the honor my boy but i was allowed to try and for that i am grateful arthur i come to you empty-handed a beggar for your love how dare you say that father empty-handed bringing me her and yourself all i ever longed for my father and my psyche father thank you the poor word must do its best i thank you with my very soul how shall i bear my happiness constance it was my father all the time did you know it serving me like a slave humoring all my whims watching me night and day and then bringing me your own little girl arthur but why did you not tell me tell you what darling that 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 you oh you know what arthur how could i my child with that shall i tell you now no no i am too happy to listen even to you arthur but he should never have i did find him out at last if i had but known you did not like him hiding her face gervais embracing his father 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 i cannot hold my happiness and it is all your doing no i tell you my boy i was but a straw on the tide of things i will serve you yet though i will be your father yet bill said father saint oh bad cuffs here's two on him good sort of old jacobs both on him shouldn't mind much if i had a fault my own arter all gervais turns to constance then glances at the psyche colonel gervais removes the sheet gervais leads constance to the chair on the dais turns from her to the psyche and begins to work on the clay glancing from the one to the other the next moment leaves the psyche and seats himself on the dais at constance's feet looking up in her face colonel gervais stands regarding them fixedly slow distant music 
bill is stealing away curtain falls end of act 4 end of if i had a father by george macdonald